Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we are again, episode three, the Transferable Experience Podcast. It's me, Julius. I'm here with my best friend, Ed. How you doing? Good, man. I'm good. How are you today? I'm good, man. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling energized. I'm feeling rejuvenated, man. I just want to say, hey, to all those listening, to all those viewing, we appreciate y'all. We're so gracious for your listenership, your viewership. Hey, on all platforms, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, like, share, comment, retweet, do all do all the things, okay? Do all the things. We want all the things on all the things, okay? Yeah, let's engage. <laughs> let's engage. Hey. So even like after you finish listening to the episode, you know, tweet us. Yeah. DM us. Favorite part about it. Yeah. You know? Real, and hey. Welcome back. All feedback. All feedback. All feedback. So I just want to welcome y'all. Here we are again at the, at the podcast, episode three. Um, I'm feeling good. Uh, Ed, are you feeling good? Feeling great, man. I mean, me too, me too, me too. So we just um, we're just here to let y'all know that we thank y'all and everything like that. Um, Ed, I I, I kind of got some, I got some updates for you, man. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> so I'm on I'm on week three of my diet. Yep. Five, four four days left. Okay. And it has been a journey. Like when you say twenty one days, you you think okay, it's just twenty one days. It's not that long. It's okay. That's not even a whole month. Yeah. For some months, but. This last week has been very, very, very um, trivial. I would say mm. that, trivial. Because, like, at, at this point, I'm thinking about what it's like to be on the other side of the fast. Uh, I'm thinking about... That grass looking greener. Man, huh? that grass looking greener. That bud looking greener and greener, Okay. I'm thinking about the food I can eat after this is, after this is over. I'm thinking about. I mean, I've already I've already waved it on the alcohol thing. Okay, so <laughs> okay, I I just couldn't do it without that. Okay, I'm sorry, but everything else is intact. I have ain't no meat, mm-hmm. no fried food, mm-hmm. no dairy. Yep. No uh, reduced grains like no white rice, no white bread, no no bread at all. Actually. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, I'm down ten pounds, bro. Hey. So that means it's working. Hey, we're gonna leave with that. I'm down ten pounds, everybody. <laughs> Real talk. Real talk. I was two forty, now I'm two thirty. I just wanna keep the trend going, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Throughout these three weeks I, I just been thinking to myself like if you can do this in three weeks, what can you do in three months? Honestly, you know what yeah, I'm saying. That's like, a great way to look at it. You know what I'm saying. Like, like I've been playing with that thought. It's like, do I even want to go back? Do I even want to go back to like fried food and 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 and, and Chick Fil A and Popeyes and Taco Bell? Like, it 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 it, it makes me think like that. That wasn't even that important to begin with, anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in this third week, I mean, I know one of the things that they they y'all been hearing me over the last couple of episodes is just to mention intentionality. You know what I'm saying? So I'm much more aware of what I'm what I'm consuming. I'm much more aware of what I'm choosing to eat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm eating, like if I if I eat asparagus today and potatoes, I know. Potatoes, although it ain't a meat, is a very heavy starch. Yeah. So it's dang little like meat, you know what I'm saying, if you eat it every day. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people yeah. eat meat to gain weight. So like, okay, I'll save you on the potatoes today. I'm going to chill out on those tomorrow and the next day. I probably won't eat potato for the next four days type, type, type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the diet, I mean, just, just all that combining – and uh, come together to form a mentality within myself, like, "Hey, you can do this." You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's one of the that's one of the major 
major things that I wanted out of this diet or a fast. It's like, I just want to prove to myself that I can do it. Yeah. And then, you know, naturally on, 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 along the path of doing that, mm-hmm. you want to ask yourself like, well, why can't I keep this going? Yeah. That's what I was going to ask since you're seeing like such great results. Mm-hmm. Will you like continue it in some modified version? You know, I think I will. I think I will. Like, I, I, like, I don't want to just jump back into meat super hard. Yeah. Number one, fis- fiscally, that's kind of like irresponsible because that's, you know, it's everywhere. Number two, I don't really know how my body's going to react to just jumping back into meat, bro. Like, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to just like day 21 or day 22 just jump back into like Popeye's and stuff like my body might not even react to it like I wanted to. Yeah. So I got to slowly and methodically in- introduce that back into my body. Yeah. If I want to do it, I ain't mm-hmm. even made a decision yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm thinking I might just keep it going for a little while longer just to see what I could do. You know what I'm saying? See how I could transform my body. So, I mean, that's been good. Um, this week has been it's, it's been hard, man. Cause like I'm so accustomed to eating the things that make me feel comfortable. Because at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's comfort food. Yeah. The chicken, the steak, the shrimp, fish. It's comforting to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and it's easy. Like it's so much more convenient than cooking a vegan meal. Yeah. Because it's pretty much a vegan diet that I'm on anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's so much more convenient than that. So it's like, uh, I'm going to have to make all this. I'm going to have to cook this. It's dishes. You know, everybody don't really just like this. Like, I don't know nobody that just like doing dishes, but it's something yeah. that got, it got, it got, it got to happen. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So that opposed to just, oh, I could just run to, I could just run to like Chick fil A, grab this. Throw it away. It's done. Yeah. Fast food, literally fast food. But I I weigh that with the gratification mm-hmm. of completing something that I set out to do. Yeah. And I definitely find more comfort and value in that. So that might carry me past the fast. I think. Yeah. So. Especially like you start seeing results like that and mm-hmm. dropping weight. Yeah, like just, it's like, man, I want to go back. What if I just, you know, mm-hmm. you start eating that stuff again? What if you put the weight back on? It's like, dang, you know. Yeah. So there's like something that would be in the back of my mind, like, well, dang, maybe I need to do like, mm-hmm. as I say, at least some type of modified version of it. Maybe like, maybe not every day, but maybe like during the weekdays, do that. You know. Right. Yeah. 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 Like maybe during the week, just just keep it clean. Yeah. Because uh, I, I know I mentioned it in an earlier episode, like, I like that I didn't feel fatigued at the end of the week. I like that, you know what I'm saying, I felt good about my about my nutrition. Yeah. And then, you know, I compounded it with the workouts. I'm back in the gym and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And if I did that in two weeks, bro, think what I could do in, like, two months, bro. Like, yeah. So that's a lot of it's a lot of incentive. Big change, yeah. Big change, big change, big change. So my brother Ed, how you doing, man? How you feeling, man? Man, another I'm, week in the books, man. What? How we feeling? What we thinking? Man, I'm I'm good, man. I I took Saturday and like I just man, I attacked it. I got like everything in order that was out of order, man. I, mm-hmm. I did a deep clean. I like stuff that I would normally wait till Sunday to do. I mm-hmm. did Saturday, man. Like most mm-hmm. of everything I need to do, I did mm-hmm. Saturday. So your whole Sunday was just clear. Yeah. So my Sunday, man, I had already like went grocery shopping and everything. The only thing I had to do Sunday was literally fold clothes. And like I, you know, like mm-hmm. my body, which is a good and bad thing. My body doesn't really know the difference between a weekday and a weekend. So like okay. the the time I wake up for work is the time I just wake up every day because like my body doesn't. It doesn't matter what time I go to sleep. It's just right. I'm just gonna wake up at the same time. So right, 
man, I used that early morning and I woke up Sunday, knocked out the little bit of stuff I had to do. And right. Had everything in line for the week. Then got back to working out and stuff. And like, yeah, I realized that like working out, it's like, I like the benefits of it. Like, you know, like physically and like being in shape and stuff, but like, that's like so therapeutic to me, man. Mm, like talk about it. Just being able to like, it just, it lets me just like get like everything kind of like, yeah. out like yeah <laughs> in like a constructive manner that yeah, you know it's yeah. like you're not screaming or just you know doing uh-huh. anything like that it's just like you just can put whatever your worries or whatever just this might make, make you feel unsettled or anything yeah. or like you just get that chance to just be like aggressive and just like and just attack it and like it's just the outlet yeah because yeah. you don't get to just be that in a lot of different you know yeah settings of, yeah, yeah so just that and Getting back to that and just like just pushing myself and just like it just felt mm-hmm. good, man. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That was awesome just to get back to that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, that I just feel back balanced, equilibrium, right? Yeah, man. Equilibrium, like is in balance. Yeah, because like, balance is like so 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 important to me. So mm-hmm. just having mm-hmm. that balance, man. So and 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 that gives you a lot of clarity. When you were approaching your days. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. For sure. For sure. So, in the midst of doing all that cleaning and everything I had to do Saturday, I was just like, you know, just thinking. and Mm -hmm. I got lost in thought and Mm -hmm. my mind went like Mm -hmm. all over the place. I just started thinking about life and gender roles and society and about who I am and that led me to this question that I wanted to ask you to kind of like ask show, me like I'm ready like perception on it um come on hit me with it hit me how would you define masculinity mm masculinity um so that is a very interesting interesting concept right cause masculinity in a concept for me personally, yeah, I feel like it's something that that I perform on a daily. Okay, like I don't. I'm. I was born genetically, a man. Biologically, a man. Like I mm. had a penis. Okay, and two balls. Okay, so <laughs> I know that I was born a man. So the masculinity came into play. Uh, as I grew up and what I what I grown to define it as I defined it as something that a man um performs to affirm his gender and and also I, I looked at it in a couple of different ways like me being able to provide me me being able to um take care of my loved ones me being able to stay logical and high emotional moments you know what i mean like like those things that i valued in men because that's being a man i'm sorry i valued those things in being a man because i saw the men that i look up to exude those attributes if that makes sense okay so that kind of i kind of like drew that from them Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what masculinity was for me and uh, just my ability to be logical, be a leader, um, provide comfort to those that need it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Cause, See, I was kind of confused on it the way I was looking at it. Cause I, I just like, well, like, I didn't really know how to, like, approach it when I was thinking about it. Because I was like, man, yeah. that, that can go a lot of different ways. I mean, like, a lot of different things to a lot of different people depends on who you ask. Because, like... Mm-hmm. How a child might define it compared to how a woman might define it Ooh. compared to how a man might define it are completely different. So, like, I was like, okay, well, let me just, like, look up the definition, right? Yeah. To get, like, a base and then go from there. So, like, yeah. I looked it up and, like, the actual definition is qualities or attributes regarded as characteristics of men. And I was like, 
what? That's so vague. Like it, it, it really is. That that doesn't give me anything. So then I was like, like, like the characteristics of men. Like mm-hmm. I feel like that's up for interpretation too, right? Right, 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 right. So it was just like, like, where do you start with that? Like, because that can mean like a lot of different things. Like, like I said, that can be up for interpretation too, right? Yeah, as like, far as like, what do you consider the characteristics of a man? And it, and it's so and it's so it's so subjective, right? Because the history of man has been very dynamic in these last, let's just say, fifty years. Yeah, like what a man is in twenty 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 one. Mm-hmm. It's kind of different than what a man was in nineteen sixty. Heck, or nineteen ninety. Nineteen. Two two thousand, you know. Yeah, I say the world changing. You know what I mean? So I mean, I mean, like, I definitely understand that, and it is, it is a, it is a conundrum, especially being the guys that we are. We were born in the nineties, right? Yeah. So we we kind of are in that 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 mesh of like old school upbringing. But understanding new age thinking, yeah. And I kind of got I, I got some things written down here that I want us to tackle, and we we gonna be able to see and we be able to out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we gonna understand. So, what I got right here is a couple of things. Let me ask you this: when 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 you think your masculinity. And you think of your ability to be dominant. What mm. does Ed say to Ed? Oh, what does Ed say to Edward? <laughs> About the ability to be dominant? As a man. Like, is, 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 is that integral to your masculinity? Do you attribute, do you, I'm sorry, do you attribute that to your masculinity or, or what? Being able to be dominant. Um, Again, that I guess it depends on how you interpret that. Um, how I interpret that, like I say, I think like it depends. Like, mm, I, I personally being able to be dominant, or do you, or, or do you have a do you have a story or an experience where like? you were faced with like if I don't do if I don't exude this or if I don't perform this I'm gonna feel less like a man when it comes to being dominant no not necessarily I guess like being dominant can kind of fall into being a leader I get that I I get that but at the same time being a good leader in my opinion is being able to like delegate uh, and kind of like mm. listen to others, you know, and like kind of like, you know, being able to listen and like, you know, consider mm-hmm. what other people say. So at that point, you, you're you not necessarily being dominant, I would say, because then that's kind of like you a dictator, which isn't the case. But I guess like as far as being dominant would be like something like being an alpha male. Like, you know, when like mm-hmm. an alpha male walks into the room, like the way he like exudes. That mm-hmm. you know, so well, you, I mean, but everyone isn't an alpha male, though. I think I do think every man aspires to be like the boss, the leader. Hey, so, honcho. Yeah, so I guess from that perspective, like if that's what you consider dominance, then that is something that we associate with masculinity. Well, let me, well, 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 let me, let me tell you this, because to our listeners, like. I've been Ed's friend for a long time. And we we watch each other grow and things like that. One of the things I would say about you, your ability to be decisive and make decisions is one of the things that I admire a lot. Like I don't I don't know if you recognize that, but I think that that is a very telling attribute of somebody that is a leader. I think that is an attribute of masculinity. Do you think that? Or have you noticed that in yourself? Yeah, I, I do know I'm 
Or it's do you, so, or do but, you know that you like? I got to make this decision. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I just like making decisions. Like, <laughs> it's not hard for me. Like, I, I, I know, like, because how I think about stuff is like, I think that come honestly comes from being like, pretty, I guess, opinionated too. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, yes, yeah, from being <laughs> opinionated. <laughs> That's kind of where that stem from because it's like I, love it. I probably like have a percept, you know, like a perspective mm-hmm. on that. So like mm-hmm. I can probably like make a decision or like just like like if someone has a like you know a opinion, I'll hear it and like consider that too. And like if that makes sense, then yeah, let's go with that. But it's like I know that you need to get to point A to point B and like get there. <laughs> and like uh-huh. I'm very like I am very driven to just get to the point. Like like. You, so, you. I feel like you are a very result based, solution based. I am. I like. I think I. That was a quote somewhere where I was saying, "I was like, anytime you ever present a problem, you need to present a solution as well." Mm. Mm. Like presenting a problem without a solution doesn't really do anything. <laughs> you don't need context either. Huh? Oh no, context is extremely important. Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah, I, I, I need okay. context. I was about to say, I don't know, man. I was just telling you the, the, the earlier about that. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. I don't like when people just aggressively send me like a link or something, but don't like provide context to and, like, mm-hmm. you know, just some type of like you I don't, don't know, no you, background. Yeah, like, like, like what are you talking? About? So now it's just up for my interpretation. So I don't know. Am I supposed to be looking for a certain thing or is this supposed to pertain to something or something? Right. But yeah, I'm very big on context. That like that shapes a lot of things. Like it does. Because if you just walk in on someone saying something and mm-hmm. you didn't hear no other part of the conversation, you just heard, you just heard that, that one yeah. line. Yeah. You might perceive that differently than someone who heard a whole thing. Which I think that's kind of like the issue. Well, that's what like one of the things in today's society is like. People don't care about con- they will read a headline and just go with it. They don't want to. And, and you know that headline would be the truth, like that, like that's the truth. You know what I mean? Like Ed, Ed shot somebody. You don't know why he shot him. But yeah, so if you, you read know? that headline, it might read completely different. Rather than you say, "Oh, he was self defense yeah, or yeah. something like that," and you mm-hmm. hear the whole story. So context is important mm-hmm. to understand everything. And, 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 and just, just I know we kind of sidetracked, but to get back on it, like I think that ability, and and that and 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 I mean that ability to stay innovative and to be decisive and to exude resilience when things are working against you, I think that's another thing that we were taught as children, as young boys growing into men because i can honestly remember times where it's like something ain't going right okay Jew, suck it up don't cry like don't feel don't feel sad about the situation worry about what you can do yeah. to better this situation mm-hmm. and 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 i i can i'm sure everybody else has gave resistance to it and not like combative resistance, mm-hmm. but like, well, why I gotta say that, or, or why I gotta do that? And what you will, and what is given to you from that is because you're a man, yeah. you're a boy, you're you're a boy. You have to learn. You have to learn to grow this shell so that you can approach life. Yeah, you know what I mean. Does does that make sense? Yeah, I I I I think that is uh one of the arch- archetypes of what masculinity was back then. Yeah, even though in the, in our present day, I think our masculinity is like the ability to address that. Mm-hmm. Ability to acknowledge that, like mm-hmm. this feeling is apparent. I feel, I feel small. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I feel, um, 
I feel like I don't have power. I feel like I don't have no control. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, as we've grown and realized, we, 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 we realize that, like, the strength, is, the strength isn't in covering up those feelings. The strength is in embracing those feelings. Yeah. And saying, because of that, I'm this. Mm-hmm. Because of that, I could perceive this situation. And because of that, I could respond like, I'm not going to not say that I'm not sad. Yeah. But it's like, but because I'm sad, I want to be resilient and I want to respond to this in a positive manner, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So rather than just acting like it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Is you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of a lot of masculinity like that we were grown up were raised up in, nurtured in. A lot of it is rooted in like internalized pain. Yeah, and trauma. And trauma. Like like you know what I'm saying? Like you know what I'm saying? Somebody hit me or I, I get cut or, you know what I'm saying? It's like, right. suck it up. Keep going. Like In black in America. <laughs> Come on. Talk about it. So, so, like, you know, you have to be raised, you know, differently mm-hmm. to be able to mm-hmm. be ready for the hardships of America. Boy, you, hey, boy, you about to get into some stuff. Hey, hey, you about to get into some. Keep going, though. So, <laughs> with that, it's like, yeah, you may be qualified for that job, but mm-hmm. that yeah. that person, dad, no, his mm-hmm. friend is that, so you may not even get it. And you, mm-hmm. on paper, you might be better, but mm-hmm. that's but, but their golf, their dad's golfing buddy. So it's yeah. just like, so I think it's just like, I think part of the masculinity, and that's that goes for uh, men and women in the black community. I think that, like, you know, we both kind of like raised where you kind of got to like have mm-hmm. like a hardened exterior about you. But mm-hmm. I do think that mm-hmm. our generation, or like, we're trying to like you know break that mold and change that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. What I, I I have another quote that I pulled up. Mm-hmm. And I would like us to react to it. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I'm going to just read it, okay? Okay. It says, in the case of Western societies, masculinity is primarily defined through ideals of dominance and physical power over women. Stop me when you want me to. Okay. okay. Uh, Actually, you can stop right there. Right? <laughs> hey, that's why I said it. <laughs> okay. What you think, man? Just, 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 just your reaction to like that first. That's like the first sentence. I instantly just started thinking about like movies like James Bond and stuff where he, or like mm-hmm. any type of movie where he's like he the quote unquote ladies man and like right. women are like madly in love with him and he just like, eh, he's like whatever. He's like disassociated. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think there's a lot of movies. And this goes back into what we were saying about like consuming, mm-hmm. like like media, like how we've been nurtured. Yeah. Like, I get that from my, I got something from my uncles and I got something from my cousins and stuff. But I also was watching TV, I was watching movies and things like that. Listening to music, listening to music, like and 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 a prevailing narrative in those things because they're all media. Is that? The man that is a man is, oh, he doesn't, he doesn't associate with emotions. He doesn't get caught up in those things because, you know, you got to do this, like the James Bond movie. Yeah. Or, you you know, you kind of had his heart and exterior because nothing can get to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When he's associated with Mm -hmm. a lot of women. Yeah, even his woman. Because that makes you the the man mm-hmm. or more of a man, like mm-hmm. the more women you're associated with. Mm-hmm. And, and, and your, your ability to give these women the facade that like you, you're with them or you care about them and their, and their, and their ability to believe in you. That makes you feel like more of a man. Mm-hmm. Which is which goes back to that control thing, to that dominant thing. Now that's dominance in a detrimental 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Detrimental light. So I'm going I'm to keep reading this. I'm going to keep reading this. You let me know. The second sentence, cultural institutions such as education, the media, the, econ- the economy, and politics uphold a singular in view a singular view of the way masculinity should be. So have you ever felt like in education, school, or media, like do you ever feel like there was a way that you should have been as a man? Well yeah. Like and did you like, always agree with that? That I mean shit. Yeah, that's like what we were talking about where like listening to music, what they talk about, mm-hmm. all the women they have and all that kind of stuff. So you think or all the money they have. So mm-hmm. you associate the mm-hmm. amount of women you have, mm-hmm. the amount of money you have, mm-hmm. what the cars you have that makes you a man and, mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. Then, like I say, when you watch these movies like that and stuff, and it's always like that too, showing you what a quote unquote man is. Right. So, right. I think that's how. Well, I. Well, I. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I read a book. It's called Code of the Street by Elijah Anderson. Mm-hmm. I put that in. That can be in the description. And it, and and in that book, it said that men, we 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 obtain our goals by what other men have done. You know what I mean? Like so, we look to a a man, we look at a man that has something that we want and we break that down. It's like, how, how do I get that? You know what I mean? Or they, they, they define what is successful, what's progressive for the man. And you kind of chase that. So like you said, getting music videos, if it's so-and-so with 10 girls, I'm trying to have ten girls in my arsenal too, because that's yeah. what I that's what I thought was success. Mm-hmm. In, in in education, well, I mean, dang, that's crazy because a lot of people that are, are educational educationally progressive, they might not always get the shine that they want. But for me, I saw dudes that had like two, three scholarships. So I'm like, okay, I I want to get that. You know, what do I need to do to do that? And that outlines your the action that you take. You know what I mean? As as, as a young I believe. I believe. Yeah. But it but it's so much surrounded in surround it's so much surrounds us now, especially in twenty twenty one with the information uh information like highway. You know what I mean? Like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, like you always been given these images of of quote unquote success or somebody having a good time and things like that, and that's very uh, and that that gives a very intrinsic impression on kids. You know what I mean, young boys and young men, and and that's what they want to be. That's what they want. But they yeah, the, like piggyback about that, like about what we observe and stuff, and that's how we shape. Um, what we believe masculinity is. Um, mm-hmm. There's a professor. Her name is Ray Wynn Connell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's like, the, like a renowned yes. sociologist. She's nice. And like, um, she's like, like I said, she's a re- renowned sociologist out of the University of Sydney. Like, that's literally like been like her main like focus. Mm-hmm. It's like, so like the um sociology of masculinities and like in um this article I found um she talked about how uh, masculinity is a practice well masculinity is a pattern of practice mm. um it's not an attitude it's not what's in people's heads it's not the state of their hormones it's what they actually do in the world and that's something that has a relationship to your body to your biology Mm -hmm. but not a fixed relationship Mm -hmm. so women can behave in a masculine way though usually it's men who do 
And also there are different patterns of masculinity. Mm -hmm. So different groups of men will conduct themselves different ways. And those patterns can also change over time. And that's kind of what we were talking about, how like, you know, it yeah. really is something you have to learn, just like everything else in life. You know, like you come in, you got to think about it. You come into the world knowing nothing, nothing like you literally don't know anything. You don't know, like, how you're supposed to behave. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't know anything. really how you're supposed to think. Yeah. Like, so you get literally taught everything. Mm-hmm. And masculinity is one of those things, too. Mm-hmm. And like you say, it's like you draw from different, you know, sources of information. Would it be media, family, yeah, 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 yeah your yeah. environment, and then you kind of just combine all that, and you kind of like, yeah, and that you kind of like carve your own, yeah, and it's like mm-hmm. your perception of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's kind of how it's broken down. But I know you did have that article where it was saying like some like typical characteristics of men or yeah I mean like or like what they believe or characteristics of masculinity Mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, I I tap into it right now Uh, some some more like characteristics of it Um, we we talked about dominance yeah being strong I'm just independent assertive Okay, so if it, you, got, you said strong, independent, and assertive. Yeah, like those are literally like one, two, three. Like the first three. Yeah. So, let's, yeah, so like for me, when I hear strong, I think of like that can be taken like, you know, physically being strong, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, someone will look at masculinity as, you know, when they with you, they can feel safe, you know. Mm-hmm. Security, or, yeah, or that might mean like emotionally, Secure. but you know, mm-hmm. but then you say it independent, you know, like, like, yeah, how would you define independent? I mean, independent, like, to me, that means that, like, I could be self sufficient, yeah, I can make do for myself, mm-hmm. and that really goes into the overall, the overarching. Um, concept of masculinity was like a man should be able to do for himself, provide yeah. for himself, so he can let other people know that I don't need y'all. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I do, I do believe I, that that's like one of those things that you know just yeah. was kind of like ingrained as far as what my perception of masculinity is being able to like mm. take care of yourself mm-hmm. and not have to depend on someone else. Because how many times as a kid you heard? I ain't going to always be here for you. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be here for you to do this, do that. I'm not going to be the one to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, as, like that might have sound like a scolding as a kid, but it's conditioning. Yeah. But in all honesty, though. It's conditioning. Independence. I feel like that is like, that, that like goes beyond masculinity i feel like that's just a black thing i would even just say like just a a, a, like human, a human thing, thing. like okay. everyone should you know mm-hmm. want to be able to feel independent like they can provide for themselves mm-hmm. now you be have you actually having to that might you know be different to be, based off of you know different dynamics but like mm-hmm. everybody probably wants to feel like they can do for themselves. Yeah, you can do for yourself. You yeah. don't want to just have to depend on someone. Mm-hmm. Or at least knowing that I have the, you know, ability like, to be on yeah, my yeah, own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so, I, yeah, so mm-hmm. I do perceive that as masculinity, but I'm pretty sure everyone probably perceives that as like an important intrinsic quality, being able to be independent and rely on themselves, you know. And, I mean, independent is a very... People, people, people gravitate towards somebody that's independent because people look for that. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are, are dependent on other things, or they make themselves feel like they're dependent on things. Like, I can't do this if this don't happen. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. I can't do this unless this person gives it to me. So when they come across somebody that can do those things on their own. And they make themselves 
they solidify themselves as somebody that can take what they have at their disposal and create a living or yeah. create a setting for themselves to thrive in, that's something to admire. Yeah. I mean, bro, even as far as masculinity goes, it's not just women. Like, bro, women look up to men and men look up to men. Of course. You know what I mean? Like, everybody wants something. Like, if you got that and I want that, I'm going to look at you to, you know what I'm saying, to 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 obtain it. You know what I mean? And it takes a lot of characteristics to do that. Like, and that kind of goes into, like, the next thing that was on the list is being assertive. Like, your ability, and this is assertive as a masculine trait, so your ability to, to speak on things, speak on things, because a lot of things, a lot of processes in this world have tried to make men, black men, like, docile. You know what I mean? Like, just go, like, that go with the flow. It ain't really bothering me, so I ain't gonna worry about it. Or, like, that old, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Like, if something happens to me, let me just be quiet because I don't want to jeopardize my position. Yeah. But a man, quote unquote, is somebody that's assertive. Like, I'm gonna speak on something, I'm gonna take that first step. If everybody's been apprehensive, I'm going to jump out there. You know what I'm saying? So I got to bust the wedge. If I got to bust the wedge, <laughs> you got to bust the wedge, bro. Like, But yeah, I think that's like, because like some of those I agree are like just, I guess can be seen as masculinity, but a lot of that is just like, I feel like comes down to personality traits because like mm-hmm. it's men and women that's assertive. Some people are just in, uh, like, you know, assertive individuals. Mm-hmm. Um. So I don't, I, but I I always was told like because I am you know kind of laid back and whatnot and like okay, yeah. I remember like just growing up like my like if I had introduced myself to someone my dad would be like speak up like make sure they hear you like yeah so like that always kind of carried that like when I like mm-hmm. introduce myself because I I kind of naturally talk low too so yeah that's kind of working against me so like. I would just always be very intentional, like when I meet people to like raise my voice a little bit to make sure they hear me kind of like honestly kind of insert myself. Like, so they so they won't forget you or they won't uh, like or you won't. Be per- yeah. Or so you won't be because, per- you know, like mm-hmm. first impressions like people perceive you, you know, they kind of just judge off of first impressions. So mm-hmm. you don't want to like come off, like, I guess. That's how you yeah, you. honestly. You don't come up as passive like this. Yeah. Like this is somebody I can like run over. Yeah. Or this is somebody I can take advantage of. Like, cause you don't want to be at the disposal of somebody else. But I, but you know, now that you say that, I have you know heard you know people say I don't want somebody I can just run over. I need somebody that's assertive. So yeah. I do think that is something that's associated with masculinity, being assertive. I think it is too, man. And. I don't know, man. Like it's 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 such a it's such a crazy thing, bro. Because a lot of it is con- conditioning. I'm gonna say this: masculinity is like a performative act. I said that earlier, but like it's something that you actively do. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, like, like we like like we saw and we heard the article from. Um, Connor, she says that like it's something that you actively participate in. Basically, like you look at this and you, and you ingratiate this into your mind to where it's normal for you to do these things. Bro. Like, yeah, like I don't know, man. Like me just coming up, at, me just coming up, coming up as as a young boy, bro. Like I don't know, it was kind of hard, bro. Like. Masculinity was something that I identified with, but like, I hate that I always felt like I had to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate that I felt like I always had to be tough. Yeah. I always had to be like ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, that's a lot. Like, that's literally just being on edge all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, man. Like, 
that was definitely something like I ain't gonna say I struggled with, but like I wondered about that a lot as as a kid. Like, but you know that way. Like, like, do I have to be this way? I'm about to say that's like associated with masculinity too, like being violent, honestly, mm-hmm. and like you know, it's like you don't want to be perceived as you know they used to say soft. Yeah. So you had to always be like you was just on the edge and ready to just attack <laughs> and yeah. So it's like that's like something that's associated with masculinity, violence, and like it is. that's like one of the negative things that's associated with. Um, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's like a negative thing that's associated with masculinity, or like mm-hmm. that's expected of you if you're yeah, masculine, which that's not a good thing because um, uh, Connell she kind of touched on that in the article too. Uh-huh. And she talked about um, kind of like what could be doing, what could be done to kind of combat that. And she was like, um, there are really quite a range of things that can be done among different groups of men and boys, of course, because boys, many of them in school, many of them in learning situations of mm-hmm. one of a kind or another, or actually in the process of forming their patterns of masculinity. Mm-hmm. So interventions towards more peaceful forms of masculine of masculinity. Um, would definitely include boys as well as adult men. These inv- interventions can take the form of personalized situations where you create a safe space for boys or men right. to talk about gender relations, to talk about their experiences with women, talk about their experiences with other men, and mm-hmm. think through what it would be to live in a more peaceful, more democratic way. Mm-hmm. Um. And then she kind of talked about how, like, that's kind of, like, fun, like, ironic because, like, um, like, the, like, society and, like, the government is, like, if, like, involved in, like, the most violent institutions in the world. Right. As far as, like, military, prison Prison systems, systems, police forces. And stuff. So she kind of talked about that and like what could do be to kind of like combat that because like you are taught like that's mm-hmm. seriously like you taught like you gotta stand up for yourself, you gotta fight and stuff mm-hmm. instead of like using your words. That's not the first thing you think when you got a problem with a man. No, first thing you think is what you gotta fight. Yeah, like physical mm-hmm. instead of just being like you know instead of just talking about it and like that is something that you know we condition to do and and it's crazy because. Those those three institutions that you named are like very hyper masculine situations. Yeah, like it like those three things they don't really account for um like you said like words emotion yeah, uh, like, understand it's more like power on power like yeah it's, just, it's very just force and force just, and brunt yeah just violence it's like, violence that's yeah all that's based <laughs> off of which isn't a good thing. Which 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 makes me wonder, and it which which makes me wonder like how much of masculinity is learned from boys being around other boys, like a social conditioning type of thing. You know what I mean? Like you might you might come into a situation where like you had one way of thinking about this, but because you're on the playground. And it's like ten other dudes. Yeah, and, I'm gonna say that, that kind of goes into like your environment. But that yeah. definitely influences what you think. Yeah, masculinity is because of an inner city kid mm-hmm. and what he got to go through and see. Mm-hmm. He might perceive being a man completely different than someone who who yeah grew up in a beautiful suburb and yeah. what he think that is. Yeah, that's true. That's true. so. Yeah, your, your environment that definitely plays into it. Because mm-hmm. man, I remember like just growing up younger, like my first like just like because you like you're a product of your environment and like what you see and observe. So like me growing up with my dad, like mm-hmm. I'm a junior. Mm-hmm. They literally call me Little Ed. So like I just always wanted mm-hmm. to be like my dad. Like I remember like this is like one of my earliest memories. Like 
he took like this lunch kit to work, which really looked like a little small cooler. Mm-hmm. I don't know why he had such a big lunch kit. <laughs> it was kind of ridiculous now that I think about it. Uh-huh. But anyway, <laughs> he had that and I wanted one too. I was like, yeah, I want one because why? My dad had one. Mm-hmm. And so my mom went, found me a little small version of it. And it was like, yeah. And like my dad in the cars. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like my can So naturally what I had posters of cars. cars yeah. So it's like mm-hmm. it's like what you around and like that's kind of what you associate masculinity with. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of what it comes down to, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like I think that's how everyone form their perception of what a man is supposed to be by mm-hmm. what they observe either mm-hmm. directly through interactions in their environment or what they consume through the media. Mm-hmm. Let me can't. Can can I can I ask you a real question? Mm-hmm. Is there a time where you feel emasculated, and what was that like for you? You don't have, you don't, you don't have to go into detail, but like, because if we're gonna talk about being masculine, I think we gotta talk about like times where we didn't feel masculine. Like, what were those things? Um, or or. What situations make you feel? I think, though, like a major one for me where I feel emasculated is like when, like, mm-hmm. I'm not able, like, say, like, when I, um, like, when my company downsized and mm-hmm. I was a part of the, you know, the people that lost took- their job mm-hmm. and, like, just like not being able to provide for myself, man. Come on, come on, bro. That's like a time. Come on, where man. I just felt like emasculate because, like, like I say, because like being able to provide for yourself, that's like their independence. That's they, like they yeah, go into their independence. independence. So yeah, that's yeah. like a big part of like masculinity for me. Mm-hmm. So like just going through that, man. Just like and like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just the like the psychological toll. Oh, that the warfare! On you. Yeah. Oh man, the this, warfare. There's a warfare, man. like at war with yourself. So just dealing with all that and just like, because you were like, you know, just like I remember, perfect example, like mm-hmm. when I was unemployed, I had went to like a concert or whatever. Yeah. And like the guy in front of me, he had like. He was with his, his uh, significant other or whatnot, and he like bought them a couple of drinks. And seeing it, I was just like, because you know they were there to have a good time, and I myself, I was like, man, I like, I would have to like, you know, do some mental math and like, you know, make sure really? I can. It's like mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I could, I, 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 I could do the concert, it. but yeah. like, I, it's like, and I could do that too, but it's like I can't, you know, like it just made me feel like the fact that I can't. I, you didn't have yeah the, the, the resources you need to be able to provide how you and be comfortable want in to, doing you know? it. Yes, yes. Because that's the thing too is like just like that aspect of it. it's like you want to do that because you feel like you know that's a and, part of your masculinity yeah, being yeah. able to provide and whatnot. Yeah. So the fact that you kind of hindered or you limited and can't do what you want to do, mm-hmm. like I said, that can like that's what made me feel like you know like that because it's like I want to do more and provide. Mm-hmm. Can't, mm-hmm. This is all I can do right now, and like, oh man, it's like you feel like, oh man, Ed, you talking to me, you talking to me, like, and like I said, it's just like part of being a man, so it make you feel emasculated and kind of like almost ashamed, you know, like, yeah. So mm-hmm. that's a time like just going through mm-hmm. unemployment and not being able to provide for myself. I think, I think so. Um, a lot of instances where I feel emasculated is when I can't it's when I can't provide answers to questions you know what I mean like yeah. when somebody looking at you and, and they're like so what are we gonna do and you be like and this is the masculinity at play bro because the real you want to be like, I don't know. Yeah. I honestly don't know what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. But you feel like you can't say that 
because you don't want to give off the um you don't get off you don't want to get off give, give off the impression that you don't know what you're doing you think that might kind of go into pride and ego too a little bit because me personally like yes 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 i'm me personally i that's yes. not something i struggle with so like I if i don't know i do I can honestly say I don't know, but I'm gonna figure it out, or I can look it up. Like, it's a lot of resources to get answered these days. But it's funny that you say that because I do associate like kind of being a wealth of knowledge. Yes, when it comes to certain stuff as masculinity, like like when people say it's stuff I didn't learn from my dad, as far as like changing a tire, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. barbecuing, barbecuing. You know what I'm saying? Knowing like, how to fix stuff like tying a tie or something like that. Yeah, it's tying a tie. It's like it's mm-hmm. certain stuff like that that I do put in the realm of being a good, like a good father, mm-hmm. being able to teach those things, which kind of like goes into masculinity yeah. because it's like you what, know like, what you're doing. And it's not to say that women don't know how. Yeah. Don't know how to do those things because they do. They now, do, but they it's do. like certain stuff that, like, mm-hmm. in a traditional like setting, it's stuff that you expect like men to know how to do to right. pass that knowledge on. So mm-hmm. I, I I get what you're saying, but yeah, I mean, I struggle with that, and it's probably pride and ego, but but a, I think that might go into masculinity. Well, so. I was just about to go. I was just about to say like pride and ego. They come from um, constructed thoughts of what you should be. Yeah, that's true. I got pride in I got pride in my food because I think that I'm a great cook. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or my pride is the reason that I can't just I have to provide for myself or be able to contribute. I can't just yeah because I live off some like right having that sense of pride. Right, right. But see, I think like oh, you cook it, you cook it. Pride is like you. Cook I think it. I think Daddy pride is it. like it can be constructive and it can be destructive. Like yes. I think having the right amount of pride is like important. Yes, yes, yes. Because I, I say like I say like that's it. what leads to like a lot of violence. Because like. You somebody might have did something, and now you think, oh, your ego might have took a little hit. So now mm-hmm. you feel like you got to retali- retaliate in a certain way, you know? Because mm-hmm. that's what you know causes a lot of confusion, right? Amongst me and right, right. When they feel like they pride or ego is being damaged, yeah, in some form of way. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's why I say like that's when it can kind of be negative, but it can also be positive. Like I say, like the pride you have in yourself. Even if you don't have, that can carry you to good yeah. things, bro. Like it's like I got a certain pride, so I know I'm a I'm at a, least provide this I'm and a figure pr- out a way to yeah. do yeah. this and contribute this. Like I yes. can't do this and that and that, but mm-hmm. I'm at least do. I'm gonna contribute. Like yeah, I got a sense of pride, you know. <laughs> yes, bro. I don't know, but I did, bro. Bro, I struggle with that, bro, because. I don't know. I just want to be a good man, bro. Like I'm not trying to. I don't know, man. And and that goes with masculinity too. Like, what do you even think a man is? Yeah. Like, what do you even think you should provide? Like, what what do you want to bring to the? You know what I'm saying? Like, I and mean, I think that's how that kind of goes into identity, being able to like yeah. define that for yourself. Who are you? Yeah. Such, it's such a simple question, but it's so deep. Who are you? I'm really getting to the core of that mm-hmm. and realizing who you are and what you aspire to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boy, you said a mouthful, bro. Yeah. Hey, you was cooking. Hey, I, you I, think cooking. We gonna, I think we're going to leave them on that yeah. so they can just, you know, you, you can think about that seriously, like, you know, like, Mm-hmm. masculinity and all that what that might mean in society but mm-hmm. you still have to define what that means for you personally because I, I think that's what like what everything always boils down to you as an individual mm-hmm. and 
just defining, like I say, learning who you are and then defining what masculinity is to you because mm-hmm. like you said, what masculinity was in the eighties, heck nineties, even early two thousand. Like, that's not what masculinity is. But and, be, and before we leave, I just wanna say, like I'm not asking for no 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 pity. But this is definitely an ever changing thing for us as men, mm-hmm. because all we can be is who who raised us. And yeah. I and I definitely sent I I definitely see us trending better if the men we are now, me and Ed, take the initiative to instill these things into the young brothers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just want to get that to the people once again. Hold on, let me go ahead. Once again, I want to thank everybody for listening. I think that I think this was, this was a very good topic. Um, thank y'all. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, we definitely appreciate y'all, man. Hey, you got something to say? Till next time.